Hey, superwomen, are you feeling like there's not enough hours in the day to get everything done? Are you constantly switching hats between being a boss and your personal life? If you nodded yes, you're in the right place. For those new to my channel, my name is Megan Ewing. I am a female entrepreneur just like you, and I've been through the grind. I know the exhilaration, the exhaustion, the joy, the stress that all come with managing a business and trying to manage your personal life at the same time. Now, I'd love to tell you that I've cracked the code to the perfect work-life balance, but here's the truth. It's a constant process, but fear not, there's definitely some strategies that can help make the process a whole lot smoother. Strategy number one, prioritize and plan. So not all tasks are created equal. Prioritize your tasks based on urgency and importance. Use tools like planners or project management apps to organize your tasks, but don't forget to include time for yourself as a priority. So the way I'll give kind of like my back end of how I do things and prioritize because as an entrepreneur, you know, you may start out with one idea and then it spreads. And then by the time you look up, you have 10 different projects going on. Um, so to-do list is just my thing. It never was before. So if you're not a to-do list person, please don't think, oh my gosh, I hate to-do lists. I'm never going to adjust. Um, but to-do lists are my thing. So usually... Sunday nights, sometimes I'll do it Friday, so I just rest the whole weekend. I will go and I'll make my weekly to-do list for the next week. And then on top of that, a new strategy that I've been adding in is time blocking. So once I have my whole list, and I'm talking about on my to-do list, I include my gym time, I include personal time. So I include everything in that, so that way I'm not forgetting about the stuff that's gonna help relieve the stress and not make me feel so overwhelmed with my business. So I take that list and I break it down into what I'm doing each day. Um, figuring out the first thing I add on, I put, I've learned to put myself first, which has taken a long time, but I'll put my gym in first. So whatever classes I'm taking, or if I'm just doing the treadmill or free weights, whatever that goes first. Um, the second thing that I put in is any meetings for the week. So, I have coordinated that my meetings will never interfere with my gym time. So that way I can always continue to put myself first as a mom and have three kids. You know, they uh, they keep me busy. So I want to be in the best shape that I can to keep up with them. And then I start going on to what I need to do each day. So my YouTube channel will start there. So my YouTube channel, the goal is to release a video a week. So that means I have to record the video. That means I have to edit the video. That means I have to create the thumbnail. That means I have to create the description, the title, all of that goes into just one video. And then on top of that, if you're trying to batch your content, um, just to kind of stay ahead of the game in case things come up, then it's even more work. So I break everything down for the YouTube channel and figure out, okay, here's my recording day. For me, I find it easier that recording and editing are the same day, so that way the content is fresh in my mind. So some people split it to where you record one day, edit one day, but however it works for you. So record and edit, I'll schedule that in, and it's not just, hey, do a YouTube video. It's, I already have the title, so I know what I'm recording, and I've already scripted it before I kind of go into recording. Um, and when it comes to YouTube, scripting is completely different for everyone. So whether you're doing bullet points, whether you're doing a full script, whether you're just doing like key pieces, so to keep you on track, it's completely up to you. But I include all of that into my time block, which started from my to-do list. So prioritizing and planning has allowed me to be a lot more productive in a lot less time. And the trick that works for me is the to-do list and the time blocking. So you could use project management apps. I like ClickUp, but I haven't really dove into it as much as I need to, but there's ClickUp, there's Trello. I'm sure there's a, a bunch of other ones, but figure out what works for you when it comes to prioritizing and planning, because it's something that you're going to have to stick with. Number two, one of my favorites, set boundaries. So you're passionate about your business and that's great. But it's also important to create boundaries between work and personal time, whether it's turning off your email notifications after a certain time or having a dedicated workspace at home, setting boundaries to help work from spilling over into your personal life, 
whatever it is, you have to set the boundaries and you have to be able to say no. So my hard boundary is when my kids get off the bus, there is no more work. That means they have my full time. So when they get off the bus, if it's, hey, we got through homework and they want to go outside and play with their friends, I can work if I want. But when they're home, they get me up. Maybe a little spoiled in that aspect, but I, that's the life that I've decided to create and that's what I want to embrace. And I want them to know that, that I'm prioritizing my time with them. Also with setting boundaries is no one to say no. Figure out, I have a huge problem and I know I'm not the only one, that I just love to help people. So I'm going to, before I even think most of the times I say yes. Oh, you know, yes, yes, yes. It has gotten me into a lot of situations that were harder to get out of than I planned or kind of landed ill feelings on one way or another because of me investing time for free and then that being the expectation. So set the boundaries, no one to say no. And the easiest way that I've learned to set my boundaries is I set my goals. So by setting my goals, I know what deserves my time, what's going to get my time and what I just can't handle to do, what is outside of my scope. And usually if it's so far outside of like my goals, the other thing I've learned since I'm not going to say no, is set a price point to it. If you're going to do something for someone, they need your services, they need your help, set a price point to it. So that way it makes it worth it for you and the other person. And if they're not interested, they're not interested. Setting boundaries is a big one and it's been a hard lesson like the past probably probably closer to like nine months to a year for me and I'm, I'm doing way better so congrats for me um strategy number three delegate and outsource ladies remember it's okay to ask for help if certain tasks can be done by someone else or even automated don't hesitate to delegate it frees up your time to focus on the tasks that require your expertise let's be honest we're building businesses, a lot of us, from scratch, from our own ideas, from our own thoughts, and we want to protect it. So no one, I think I get into things and I'm like, well, no one's going to love my business like I do. No one's going to treat my customers like I do. There are certain tasks that you can outsource that will make your life easier. It can be different for different people. So when it comes to delegate and outsource, figure out what can make your life easier. So if you're sending... If you're sending weekly emails to your clients, to your fans, to people who have subscribed to your email list, if you're sending those weekly emails, do you need to write them all? Can someone help write them all? Can someone write some of them? If you're doing blog posts, if you are, if you just don't like the email communication with clients, have someone do that. And if you're super worried about it not sounding like you or it not being the same as some of the emails you wrote, the good thing is you can make templates in the emails and now you've made it easier for someone else to take on that task. The templates are made so you know that it's going out how you want it and you don't have to worry about it anymore. Another big thing is if you're in the service industry and you're doing contracts and invoices, do you really have to send out every contract and invoice if you have the templates and you have everything set up and you know how you want it to look? You can have someone else do that for you. It may seem like, oh, it, you know, it only takes a few minutes, but imagine if you don't have to worry about those few minutes ever again and someone else does that and you can focus on serving clients, having meetings, whatever it is that your business entails. Strategy number four, and probably one of the most important ones, practice self-care. Work-life balance isn't just work and chores. It's also about taking care of your mental and physical health whether it's yoga, reading, or simply a quiet cup of tea, take time for activities that help you unwind and rejuvenate. This is gonna be different for everyone. Um, and I like to give what works for me because hopefully it'll kind of help you guys too. So what works for me, my mornings, I get up early. I get up before my husband, before the kids. I just, that's my time. And I was never a morning person. So for me to say this feels really weird. But in the mornings when I get up, um, the first thing I do is I read. I'm, I read every day. It just gets your mind going. You get different perspectives of things. And it just, it puts me in a place of like, I got this. Um, so next thing is usually the gym. So I do my reading, I do my gym. Then I get home, shower and everything. And by that time, the kids are getting up or need to be getting up. 
So then I can transition into mom mode. And then once they're on the bus, I can transition into work mode. So giving myself my morning routine makes it a whole lot easier to one, deal with the kids, getting them on the bus, getting them to school, making sure they don't forget anything, and then switching right into work mode. I did everything I needed to do for myself and I can move on with it. So that's what works for me. Um, setting up the morning routine has just been kind of my go-to. You can set it up as a nightly routine. You may not want to read, so don't read. Go do yoga, do a meditation, whatever works for you. Find that time and outside of like the daily routines, figure out your breaks, whether it's a month off, a week off, a weekend off, a quick trip, whatever it is, take that time for yourself because you're going to come back ready to work even harder because you got that experience of what you gave yourself in that break. All right, strategy number five, embrace perfection. This might be the hardest one, but it's also the most important. Remember, it's okay if everything isn't perfect. We're human and sometimes we need to let go of the being of being the perfect entrepreneur and the perfect mother or the perfect partner. Perfection is something that in talking to a lot of clients, I've realized stops most ideas before they ever get started. So you have this great idea and you know how to kind of go on with it. You have this kind of general idea of how you want it done. And then you decide, oh, but I want it to look exactly like this. And it doesn't. So you feel like, okay, well, I'm not releasing it. Or you decide to ask a friend, ask a family member, ask someone else their advice. And they say, oh, you know, I don't think it's perfect. I think you should still work on it. And now you get that feeling of defeat and you don't end up pursuing it. A lot of the best ideas, and this is just from like my experience of talking with a lot of other entrepreneurs, a lot of the best ideas have already been thought of, but no one acted on it. The person who thought of it is too scared to pursue it, to act on it, to kind of move forward with it, and it stops you in your tracks. You're not going to be perfect. Trust me. I hate it. And I'm talking about like hated being on camera. I'm still getting used to it. But if you would have seen some of my first videos, which you probably have, um, or you go back to some of my first videos, I'm not as confident. I'm not as happy. I'm not as comfortable talking about it because in the beginning, I wasn't the perfect entrepreneur. Who am I to give advice to entrepreneurs? Who am I to have clients and coach them? I just questioned myself. So then it was like, well, it's not going to be perfect. I shouldn't do it. I'll, I'll leave it to the pros. And I left it at that for a long time. And my biggest regret is I wish I would have started sooner. So whatever ideas you have, figure out your imperfect plan. Your imperfect plan can continue to grow and turn into a better plan as long as you pursue it, as long as you're taking action on it. So don't be scared if it's not perfect. It's not going to be perfect. This video today is not perfect. This video that I did last week is not perfect. Nothing's going to be perfect, but in the action of doing it, you're going to get a whole lot better and you owe it to yourself to pursue the dreams and the ideas that you have. So don't let it stop you. Um, no one's perfect. And even the people who look perfect aren't perfect. I hope these strategies help you on your journey to a healthier work-life balance. And remember, balance isn't about equally dividing your time, but rather finding a blend of work and life that brings you fulfillment and joy. So drop your questions, thoughts, and your own tips in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more videos navigating this crazy entrepreneurial journey. This is Megan Ewing signing off. Stay balanced, stay focused, and keep making your entrepreneurial dreams come true.